Hi! In today's video, I'll show you a full breakdown of how I created textures for this cyberpunk building using Adobe Substance 3D Painter. I'll walk you through the entire process and tell you how I achieved this effect, which is not only possible for beginners, but also fun to do. I start by creating the wall material. I drop a concrete texture as the base and then add a clay terracotta layer on top. I create a white mask and for the fill layer I use a brick pattern. I invert it, adjust the number of tiles on both the X and Y axis and scale it down until I get a satisfying effect. I duplicate the layer, turn off all channels except for height and increase it a little to make the bricks pop. I go back to the color layer and using color correct and color balance filters, adjust the colors to make them more saturated and darker. Next, I create a new layer filled with dark gray, add a black mask and apply the dirt generator. I tweak the generator's properties until I get the effect of a building covered with grease and smoke. In a very similar way, I add some moss accents. I drag and drop a skin vegetation texture, slightly change its color and use the 3D linear gradient generator to add some green tones to the bottom of the building. I also add the dripping grass generator to the same layer to add most accents to the higher parts. I move all these layers into one folder, create a white mask and paint to remove some bricks from the building's corners. Later, I choose a different brush, adjust its size and angle and start erasing bricks one by one to make it look like they fell off. I also remove bricks from other logical places, like near pipes or random damaged spots. Once this is done, I add a dirt layer over the concrete, group everything into one folder and add a sharpen filter set to 0.1 as the final touch. For the ground, I use a concrete coarse texture as the base. I drag and drop a smart material called plastic dust and replace its fill layer with the texture I chose earlier. I adjust the dirt and dust masks and change their fill colors until I achieve the look that I want. I also create a separate dirt layer to give it an even dirtier look, like a street sidewalk. I use the same material for other pavement elements and the curb. For the building corners, I switch the base texture to concrete cast, duplicate it, darken it a little and fill a black mask with a grunge texture to age the surface. I play with the scale and rotation to get it right. Next, I create a new layer filled with a brighter color and apply a concrete edges mask. Then I create another layer with only the height channel enabled. By lowering the height value, everything I paint now looks engraved. Using this technique, I paint lines in 2D view to make the concrete piece look divided into smaller sections. I add angle points, which I reference in my dirt layer by enabling micro height and micro normal in the properties. I adjust the dirt scale and invert it if needed. To make it look old and damaged, I use a cracks brush on vulnerable areas like edges and near the ground. I apply this material to the roof as well. For the awning, I drag and drop a blue fabric texture. I change its color to red, duplicate it and make the duplicate darker. I add a black mask and use the fabric circle half overlap texture as the grayscale pattern. I adjust its rotation, scale and border width. Then I start stacking layers by duplicating them and changing colors and mask properties, creating a nice colorful fabric pattern. I group all layers into one folder and use oil paint and sharpen filters to blend them together. After that, I create a new layer filled with white, add the dripping grass generator and tweak it slightly to create a damage effect. Similarly, I add another layer filled with dark brown and apply a dust soft mask to make the awning look dirty and dusty. This part is probably the simplest. For most metal details, I use smart materials from the Substance 3D library and just adjust dirt masks or swap base textures. 
For neons, I enable the emissive channel on the texture set settings, add a layer filled with the color I want the neon to emit, and increase the emissive intensity in the shader settings tab. Also, don't forget to enable glare in the display settings for the glowing effect. I repeat this for all neon signs, changing the emissive color to pink or green as needed. I explained how I created the window and glass materials in more detail in my Instagram reel for this collaboration, so if you're interested, check it out. You can also try making them by yourself based on what I've already shown here. It's very easy. For the entrance door, I reused the plastic dusty smart material. I adjust the color and dirt mask settings to better fit the object. To add interest, I create a new height layer filled with a tile generator and place it at the top of the layers. I tweak it a bit, but eventually switch to a stripes generator instead. I add ankle points and use them in a dirt layer to add wear around the raised details, just like I did for the concrete parts of the building. I lower the dirt level and darken the color. I use the same method for the window frame, but remember, if you're using ankle points, create new ones for different objects because they refer to specific object data. I cover the AC texturing process in more detail on Instagram, so if you're waiting for this part, head over there. I use lots of height, metallic, ankle points and masks. The process is the same for most small elements, and I always add tiny details like screws to boost realism. Since it's a city building, I usually go for a greasy, dusty look and almost always add grunge grayscale fills, which work great for photorealism. To create the tile material, I drag and drop a marble vein texture on the mesh. I create a new layer, increase its height and add a black mask with a checker fill. I do the same for the color layer. After adjusting the checker size and not liking the result, I switch to 3 planner projection and tweak colors. I add the sharp dirt mask and some grunge leaks in the roughness layer set to a low value for subtle surface wear. I use the same setup for interior tiles but adjust mask contrast, marble color and tile size. For walls, I also use ankle points. I textured the roll blinds the same way as the awning, starting with a fabric texture, stacking layers, changing colors and adjusting the pattern. For this, I use the fabric medieval flower texture. For the small entrance rack, I use a different fabric texture, then duplicate it and add a fabric diagonal layer for pattern variation. As a final touch, I add a mud layer, change the base color to height, set the blending mode to replace and paint it over the rack. This way the height affects only this layer. I use the footprint brush, but don't really want a perfect human foot, so I refine it with a basic brush to make it look more like a shoe print. And that's how I textured this cyberpunk building. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like if you want to see more videos like this and subscribe to the Adobe Substance 3D channel for more in-depth project breakdowns. Thanks for watching.